Hey, got again? Alright. This is a uh, yeah, one of the final stages. Want to show um, preparation for puttying. Yeah, born all the way along everywhere. The skinning putty with the epoxy resin. I run into every join. Well, some, yeah, quite a few of these joins are quite open, and some are already previously puttied as well. And yeah, you know, so you want to go along here, like you know, really sort of slush it in, you know, and, and yeah, and then the excess that you wipe off, you just wipe over the tops of these. So these are only you know, tiny, very thin amount of putty going over that, but. Yeah, you know, the reason you slosh it into those joints is you want to glue them together. You not only want to provide something for the putty to um, stick to, but you want to you want it to get in there and seal the timber, and, and you know glue it together wherever it's possible. Yeah. So you can see I've gone over yeah every rivet, every screw, everything will be covered up. You know, like the buddy the boat was. I don't know if it's originally puttied, but it's puttied prior to me getting it. So that's how it's going to be again. It's going to be all fully smooth. You can see up here, that, that was the first bit of epoxy I put on it. And it's, it's already dry. It's not hard. Like It takes several days to dry, but I like to go hard. But um, hopefully by tomorrow, like the epoxy that's on here, well, this this is already you know, drying up the sand, but the epoxy's not. So hopefully by tomorrow, like I'll put it out in the sun tomorrow, and uh, yeah, hopefully by the time I finish putty and I can start sanding some of it. And yeah, it's not like a car; like you don't have to get it absolutely perfect. You don't have to even get it smooth. You go over it with the forty grade on the sand and you paint it. Yeah, and hopefully with the Hue and pine being a soft timber, it'll sand down, you know, evenly with the putty. Like, when you're putting putty over metal and stuff like that, when you go to sand it, if it hits metal, the metal becomes a high spot. But what I'm hoping is that the timber and the putty will be sort of, you know, around the same sort of, soft hardness sort of thing and they'll sand even so anyway so it, it should be uh, a fairly quick easy sort of sand I want to say quick you know there'll still be a couple of hours in it but yeah it'll basically just be a, you know a sort of a gloss over anyway um, one thing I did do um, I did use the um the rotary sander, 40 grit paper on an angle grinder to get in here. And you've got to be really, really sort of light and careful because the edge of the paper will cut a groove into the paint. You know, it's sort of done it a little bit, but you know, you've got to try and keep it to a minimum. So you go along here and then you come down here and you actually let the paper sit into the groove a little bit. And... Uh, yeah, clean all that off. But yeah, I've gone right over the whole boat now. As you can see, I've removed all the paint. You try and keep it flat, but there's still sort of... You still sort of get a wavy effect. So hopefully when I run over it with a sander, you can sort of see, I can feel it there actually. See, and that, that'll look shit when you paint a gloss on it. You'll see all those little ridges. So yeah, hopefully they're all going to sandy up when I go over it with the... With the sander and yeah, clean up the putty. Um, you know, if there's any that, that are really deep that look bad, hopefully I'll pick it up while I'm putty in it and put some putty in it. And uh, yeah, there's a possibility I'll have to you know, re putty bits and pieces. Yeah, like I'll get it all 
Heidi and I put some some undercoat on it. I'll leave it out in the sun for a good you know, day or, or more to set, and then I'll check it. And yeah, there might yeah, there'll possibly be a bit, little bit here and there that requires a little more putty. But yeah, what I did do too, I made another special tool. Always making special tools. This is this is just an off cam metal. It's already cut sort of to that shape. I just rounded the edges, so I'm not going to cut myself, you know, because you, you're putting a bit of pressure. But yeah, it's just a little hook. It's only eighth of an inch wide, three mil, and that's what I used to get in here, you know, clean the gaps out, especially where there was already putty and it was dry and cracked and yeah. Like I did that, but, you know, before I epoxied it, obviously. But, yeah, it's another reason to, you know, slap your epoxy in there because if you've, you've got old, dry, cracked resin, you want to bond it all together. But, uh, yeah, just a little tool. And, yeah, made it real quick just to go along there and clean all the gaps. Used it again up here. Clean these gaps out. Yeah. I don't know if they were like that originally, or whether that's opened up or whether they've supposed to be like that, but yeah, I'm going to fill all of that anyway. I'll fill all these gaps in just with a regular putty. I did put an epoxy putty, it's still wet, I've only just done that. Use the last of me epoxy. But yeah, packed all that in really, really tight, yeah, really, really wet because I want a really strong bond on these pieces. So, yeah, there's another split in there. I opened that up with a um, with a trimmer knife, just beaded out so I could pack putty in there tightly. It's on both sides. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's what you're going to do if you're going to putty timber. You have to have something for it to bond to. The epoxy is a really good thing because it soaks into it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, the, your putty will stick really well to that, to the epoxy, and the epoxy is soaked into the timber and bonded to the timber. So, yeah, that's going to make a really good bond. You know, I don't expect any of this putty to ever crack and fall out. One thing you do want to do too, like oh, I've missed a few bits, I've still got a couple of runs here and there. But, yeah, after you've yeah, put it on, just sort of go over and check it and, yeah, wipe off any excess runs because they do become hard to sand. They're hard to sand because, you know, like, even though it's set, it's hard, but it's not, yeah, like it won't go really hard for weeks, months, you know, and... So it clogs your paper up when you're trying to sand it, and that's what most sort of makes it hard to sand them off. Yeah. So yeah, always scrape off as much as you can. Like you know, spread it out. I mean, yeah. You've also gone over. Well, those those big splits of field, but places like yeah, up here where those very fine cracks starting to appear in the timber. There's a few places like that, and I, yeah, rub the epoxy right into that, and uh, yeah, it should not only sort of seal it, but it should prevent it from continuing to split, it should bond it together. Yeah, up here on the bow, sand back the uh, epoxy sawdust putty that I put in it. You see, that's all, yeah, rock solid now. And, uh, yeah, I've gone over it again with more epoxy resin after I sanded it because there will be a very, yeah, light coat of, of regular putty on there now just to finish it off. But, yeah, yeah that, that, that's strong as that beer, yeah, from being, you know, Full of splits and cracks and that that's all bonded together it's really solid so yeah that would come up pretty decent all right 
I suppose there's too much more I can show you on this now. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where that, the height of that patch didn't match because this was dipped in. So, yeah, so I, I filled it with epoxy and sawdust initially just for, for a strength and then I've yeah, gone over with the regular putty now. This probably probably didn't need it. This is fairly level anyway, but yeah, went over it anyway. Filled the gap in between the planks and the bow. This patch could have been a bit wider, but yeah, I mean, there was yeah, not that it mattered that much. There was a gap all the way along anyway. You know, it's not going to affect the strength. It's all screwed down, and I said, and I epoxied all in that there as well. You can see it on the other side, actually. You can see the, yeah, the gap between the planking and the and the keel. So. Anyway, so hopefully tomorrow we'll get some undercoat on this. And so I'll leave it a day to dry, and then I'm gonna turn it over, put it back on the trolley. Put me uh, triangle wedges in the front and uh, prop it up and uh, yeah, start cleaning up. There's a lot of peeling paint on the inside to come off. I'm not going to sand it to this extent on the inside. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, you'd be there for months. Seriously, it's just because of all the ribs and the planking and the seats and everything else that's in there. You, the, you know, you, You'd just be there forever trying to clean it back to bare timber, so I'm gonna add a wire wheel, two wire wheels. So put them on the drill, take off any paint that's flanking and any any paint that doesn't come off with that will be staying on there. So. Alright, leave it at that and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.